Rabbits can cause a lot of damage in certain environments. They can spread diseases to other animals. They can be extremely destructive to farmlands. And when they show up in an ecosystem where there are no natural predators, well, that's generally a recipe for disaster. That is exactly what happened in China when they first introduced domestic rabbits into the wild. The population quickly exploded, and by some estimates, there were around 600 rabbits per square kilometer. That meant that all of the vegetation was completely wiped out in many areas, and entire fields of grain crops were destroyed. It was a huge problem, but China had an idea for a solution. They rounded up as many of the rabbits as they could and dropped them off in the desert. Surely they would be fine, right? Well, not exactly. And this was one massive mistake. Here's why China relocated one million rabbits to the desert. When we think of deserts, we usually imagine a barren wasteland with very little life. In reality, most deserts are actually full of life, just not the kind of life that we typically expect to see. There are plenty of plants and animals that have adapted to survive in these harsh conditions. So when China decided to move a bunch of domestic rabbits to the desert, they probably assumed that the rabbits would struggle to adapt and therefore wouldn't survive. What they didn't realize was that while the desert may seem like an inhospitable place, it's actually quite hospitable for a rabbit. Rabbits are great at surviving without water because they get almost all of the moisture they need from the food they eat. As long as there is vegetation around, rabbits should be able to survive. And as we mentioned earlier, when rabbits are introduced to an area where there are no predators, their population tends to explode. This was the case in China. And so when these rabbits were released into the desert, they actually flourished. But things weren't good for the rabbits, at least not initially. After all, they were dropped off in the middle of one of the harshest environments on Earth. But surprisingly, they adapted. Not only did they not die off, but they multiplied even more. And this caused another problem. See, the issue with rabbits is that they eat everything. When they're in a healthy ecosystem, this isn't a problem. They're simply eating what they're supposed to. But in an environment where there aren't supposed to be rabbits, well, they become a serious threat. Even though rabbits are small, they can cause a lot of damage. A pair of rabbits can destroy about 200 kilograms of vegetation every year. And if they don't have any predators, they can breed like crazy. Like we mentioned earlier, there were around 600 rabbits per square kilometer in some parts of China. So that meant that every year, these rabbits were eating their way through all of the local plants and grasses. And this led to severe soil erosion. All of the topsoil was washed away during the monsoon season, which left large gullies in its wake. These gullies eventually turned into vast canyons. And over time, these changes led to the creation of deserts. That's right, rabbits were literally causing China to lose even more land to desertification. This made it a lot harder for farmers to grow crops. It also meant that people in the region had fewer resources available to them. It was a snowball effect that seemed to have no end. So China needed to do something. They couldn't keep fighting a losing battle against the rabbits. And that's when the government came up with a brilliant plan. They would use the rabbits to help create the very thing that was destroying the country. Well, sort of. Let us explain. China decided that instead of killing the rabbits, they would relocate them. They gathered up as many rabbits as they could and transported them to the desert where they would hopefully die off. This might sound cruel, but remember, these rabbits were causing millions of dollars worth of damage back home. They were out of control, and relocating them seemed like the best option. Plus, it wasn't like they were being sent to just any desert. They were being sent to the Gobi Desert, which is already a rabbit paradise. So how did this plan play out? Well, let's start off by talking about the rabbits. Even though these rabbits were well adapted to life in the desert, they still struggled after being moved. For one, there were already a ton of rabbits in the desert. This meant that the newcomers had to compete for limited resources. Additionally, the rabbits had to deal with the harsh climate. Summers in the desert can be brutally hot, but winters can be freezing cold. The rabbits needed to find shelter to survive. And unfortunately, there wasn't much of that around. 
So at first, the rabbit population declined. However, this decline didn't last for long. Remember, rabbits reproduce quickly, especially when there are a lot of rabbits around. There is less competition for mates, and so rabbits are able to breed like crazy. This is exactly what happened in the Gobi Desert. The rabbit population soon rebounded. But this wasn't necessarily a bad thing. At this point, the government had accomplished what they set out to do. They had removed a bunch of rabbits from ecosystems where they were causing damage. Now they could focus their efforts elsewhere. However, the rabbits soon became a problem once again. Their population exploded and they began eating everything in sight. But here's the thing. They were doing this in the desert. So it didn't really matter. Sure, it would have been better if the rabbits hadn't eaten all of the vegetation, but it wasn't like they were causing any real damage. They were simply surviving. And the government realized that they couldn't just kill the rabbits or try to capture them all. There were too many of them. So they simply had to live with the fact that the rabbits were going to continue multiplying. Now let's talk about the desert. As we mentioned earlier, the Gobi Desert is already a rabbit paradise. That means that there was already a lot of vegetation around for the rabbits to eat. But even though the rabbits were perfectly adapted to the desert, they still needed human help to thrive. You see, while the Gobi Desert does have a lot of vegetation, it's not exactly food for rabbits. Most of the plants growing around are shrubs, succulents, and cacti. And those are all very hard for rabbits to digest. However, there was plenty of farmland on the edge of the desert. This farmland provided the rabbits with the perfect food source. They would sneak into the fields and eat everything in sight, and then they would head back into the desert to raise their young. This wasn't good for the farmers, obviously. They had worked hard to grow their crops and the rabbits were ruining everything, but it was good for the desert. As the rabbits hopped around the desert, they would leave droppings behind. These droppings contained grass seeds, and wherever they landed, new grasses would begin to grow. The rabbits were essentially seeding the desert for free. Now you might be thinking that this couldn't possibly make a difference, but you'd be wrong. Every little bit counts when trying to reclaim the desert. The seeds that the rabbits were leaving behind were hardy and drought-resistant. This meant that they could survive in the harsh environment of the desert. Over time, the rabbits inadvertently helped turn the desert into a grassland. Of course, this didn't happen overnight, but the process was sped up thanks to the rabbits. And over time, the Gobi Desert became a lot greener. Now, this isn't to say that the desert is suddenly full of trees and shrubs. Desertification is a slow process, and it takes a long time to reclaim the desert. But things are definitely looking up. Thanks to the rabbits, the Gobi Desert is now covered in grasses and other small plants. This helps hold back the sand and prevent further desertification. It also provides food and habitat for other animals. So it's safe to say that the rabbits have had a positive impact on the desert. But what about the rabbits themselves? Are they happy in the Gobi Desert? Well, it depends on what you ask. Some would argue that the rabbits are thriving in the Gobi Desert. They have plenty of food and very few predators. Others would argue that the rabbits are miserable. They are far from their natural habitat and have to deal with the harsh desert climate. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide whether or not the rabbits are happy. In the end, China's plan to deal with the rabbits was actually a pretty good one. They couldn't kill all of the rabbits or relocate them all, so they did the next best thing. They moved the rabbits to an area where they wouldn't cause any damage. And this ended up being a good thing for both the rabbits and the desert itself. Now watch. This is what would happen if all the rabbits in the world invaded your country. Or check out what would happen if all the dogs in the world went feral.